Well, I'm going to I'm going to reconvene the select board meeting. Call the select board meeting to order at five uh, at five fifty five. Uh, we have the select board. We have Recording the, in progress. We have the uh, select board. We have the town treasurer. We have the uh, road foreman. We have Steve here to talk to us about uh, road issues. And we have the folks from over on Mean Road. Um, and we have the listers. Uh, have I missed anyone? People on Zoom. People on Do Zoom. we have anybody on the Zoom? Yes. Paul. Do you have your phone? Get your phone? Paul. Paul, Paul are you? is here. And then a Steve. Steve and Evelyn, I think, are together. Okay. Okay. Evelyn and Steve, you need to mute. I'm going to go back up there. Hey, guys. Yeah. Maybe Sarah could mute mute them. Yeah. Sarah, can you mute can them? Can you mute them? I'm trying. There, there she goes. Yeah. You got it. Okay. I don't know someone with Evelyn. So, uh, welcome everyone. I hope you're all warm and dry. Uh, the first order of business tonight is approve the minutes from the September 19th, 2023 regular select board meeting. Action likely. Uh, is there a motion on those I'll minutes? I'll make the motion to accept the minutes of September 19th, 2023 regular select uh, board I'm meeting. I'm sorry, that's a typo. September 5th. Okay. Oh, today's okay. Night. Right, today's the 19th. Yeah. Right. As corrected by the uh, administrative uh, assistant, September 5th. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of approving the motion that has been moved and seconded, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We've approved the minutes. Reviewing and amending and approve, excuse me, reviewing, amending, and approving the agenda for the September 19th, 19th or hour on the 19th, 23 select board meeting action likely. Um, the only, uh, the only uh, potential change I have to the agenda is we have uh, 10 minutes uh, on the agenda for continuation of Mead Road discussion. And I acknowledge that may not be enough time to uh, resolve this situation tonight. Uh, and we can, I'm going to allow us to go over a little bit, but we are not going to spend too much time talking about this tonight. We'll have to pick it up our at our next meeting if we don't get there tonight. So just so everybody understands that. Peter, I have an amendment too. Just okay. briefly, uh, the, you have a watershed form that needs to be approved inside. This is a watershed permit for the Welch Park Fire Department uh, wastewater permit. It's, a, it's something you do every year. It's right there. You just have to approve it. It's a notice of intent to go ahead with the permitting process. Right here. The for, the, for the Welch Park Fire Department. Okay, we could do that under other business? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? Okay. Make a motion. Peter? What? Make a motion? Oh, to, you're, you're, to accept the agenda. To accept the agenda with the uh, <laughs> aforementioned uh, amendments by uh, Peter Hood and uh, Sarah Merriman. Thank you. Is there a second? second okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've accepted the agenda. Continuation of Mead Road discussion. Um, so as we all know, we met down there in the rain. Uh, we uh, inspected the situation down there. There was quite a bit of uh, discussion about where the center line of the road was, where the center of the line of the road should be, uh, et cetera. And with that, I would uh, open it up to the board for comment and discussion, and also members of the public, but the board, please, first. You want to start us off, Victor? Um, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> OK. How about Randy? Sure. Um, Go ahead, Randy. First. Um, you know, more of the same review for me tonight. You know, we've spent some time uh, on site with Evelyn and Sam as well, uh, Stephen and Zach, uh, you know, um, having some discussions with those folks, reviewing pinpoints, 
and whatnot. Um, after you know hearing what was said tonight, I think the, the big thing on my mind is you know the the line set that you guys had had drawn out being you know basically a a straight line uh, pin to pin. I've got the survey up here in front of me, and I've talked with folks on site about just acknowledging that the road does have curvature to it. The survey has curvature to it. So I think while you know the the straight line that was uh, displayed tonight makes sense from that point of view. I don't think it takes into consideration the natural curvature of the road. Um, that's that's even you know displayed on the on the survey. Um, you know, with that, you know, I don't think anybody was you know disagreeing that the two center points at the pins, you know, those all seem to be. You know, everybody seemed to be in agreement there. Um, it it feels to me like we just need to come to uh, an understanding, and I think the town needs to follow up and just say, the road is the road. We all agree upon the center of the road. That 22 feet, you know, travel way, whether it's actually 22 feet or not, we just can't have anybody putting anything or, or disrupting any part of that 22 foot roadway. That's my stance. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I'll just add that in general, I don't think the town usually cares if it's not, if there are things in a right of way, like a mailbox or, I mean, my porch was in a right of way, right? It's like, these are things that just naturally happen because we live in Vermont and we have crazy old roads, right? And so in general, you know, you know, we as a town, as long as, you know, WEC can get to the pole and, um, you know, if the fire truck had to come down, right, that they can have access without there being things in the way. But since this seems to be a, a matter in which um, you want us to lay down the law in terms of what the um, the length of the road is, what can be in a road. Um, you know, I, I think that if that's what you're asking, then we say take from the center, make it 22 feet, remove everything that's there. That's your road. The additional space is the right of way. And don't touch the road <laughs> unless you're without, plowing it. Without permission. Right, and you're gonna have to plow it yourself because that's what you do in the winter, right? Someone has to plow the road. So plowing the road, agreeing on where you're going to put the snow um, so that it's not in the way of other people. But you know, if you have ever gone around Middlesex and looked at a lot of our class four roads, yours looks pretty darn good. And you know, there are other roads that are just not getting the attention that your road is is getting um, right now, and you know, I honestly think this boils down to people having a hard time agreeing on their territory. And all we can ask that you do is that you don't play around in the road and mess it around with it with tools and machinery and rakes and shovels, and unless you ask permission, and have a rough idea of where that 22 feet is and be respectful of each other. Don't put up signs in the road, don't put up things in people's right of way, just leave it alone and try to live peacefully. Bridget? I back up both statements. Okay, Victor, anything? Well, um, I think that uh, I think that that road, that the uh, road is, as you said, I mean, it's a stupid, sounds like a foolish statement, but it is what it is. The road's where it is. And I have no problem where the road is. But uh, now, I'm not saying that at one time, I don't know that the line that Steve put out there, it doesn't look like it's where the road is now. And I don't think, uh, 
you know, if if that if 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 that road is over there and you plow that, you're going to be plowing snow right over on. I mean, if you stay in that 22 foot, you're going to be way over into what is now perceived as Zach and Evelyn's property. You know what I mean? If that's the center of that line, is the center of your road. And it may well have been at one time, but it's not now. And it may be a legal battle. Uh, I don't think the town should be in on a legal battle. And, uh, but uh, it's, if, if that's the case, at some point the road got moved, it got moved. Uh, it's the uh, property owner at the time's responsibility to guard his own portion of the road. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. I mean, that's kind of the yep. way I'm leaning. Thank you. So um, here's what I would say, which is sort of reaffirming what some of the other board members have said. I, I appreciate uh, uh, seeing where those pins were. And I would say uh, I agree, and I think we would all agree that that is the center of the road at that point. Makes sense, seems to be right in the center of where the road is, so that makes sense. What I'm struggling with is when you string a straight line between those two points, that's a straight line between the two points. I'll, I'll recognize you, Steve, but it does not necessarily show where the road is. And uh, I'm looking at the survey right here, and it's clearly clearly got a, got a curve in it. Uh, when I look at the road as it exists now, maybe it's over a little bit, but when you sort of follow the curve gently around right to where the old bridge abutments were and right across the bridge, um, that seems to make sense to me. So um, getting back to the argument that the road is where the road is, I think that's what we're all trying to say. Now, the other thing is, and I want to be crystal clear about this, is the right of way of the road, the 22 feet, is the part of the road that we are the most concerned about. And I realize that the traveled right of way as it exists is not 22 feet wide. There may be trees in that 22 feet. There may be other obstacles in those 22 feet. But I disagree with the idea that landowners can put rocks or barriers or do anything inside that 22 feet without permission from the town. Snow plowing, obviously, accepted. You have to be able to you have to be able to plow snow, and I agree. You guys need to figure out where the uh, where the snow should be. But for instance, that line of rocks that I observed on what would that be? The east side of the road. How to get mixed up when I get down there? What direction yeah. I'm going? I think those rocks need to be moved back because they are clearly in what potentially is the 22 foot. Uh, traveled traveled right away but all we are truly saying to all of you is we get a regular activity from people who say we want to do some ditching on our class four road we want to cut a tree down that's in the town right away it's on our land but it's in the town right away but it's blocking the sight line down the class four road is that okay with the town yes we would say, yes, that's fine. You know, things like that are routinely, and all, all, it, all it takes is a, a phone call to Eric. He'll go out there and look at it if he needs to, and we'll respond in writing, and it'll be in writing that we have given you permission to, to do those activities. And if it's something that's likely to be disputed, we'll notify uh, abutting landowners that one of their neighbors has act, asked for permission to, to uh, change the path of the road. Um, and that's really it. I mean, our, our highway policy and our class four road policy pretty much, pretty much outline all that. And we are not interested in making new policies, new regulations, new, new anything. Um, in a perfect world, we'd like you guys to all get along. I believe you all used to be friends. Hopefully you can be you can be friends again and neighbors, good neighbors in the in the future. But uh, Steve, you want to be recognized? So 
I would also like to address the fact that the it's it's not just the location of where the center of the road is. That's the question. It's the fact that the road has been altered many times in multiple ways to the point where the entire roadway tips to one side, which would never be a thing if it wasn't altered without permission in the first place. So that is the other the other half of this. And where is where is it you to perceive that that's going on? You can literally you were just on the road. You can stand on the road and see that the entire road slams slants towards our property. I can literally show you video of the road being okay. altered in a fashion okay. that creates okay. water flow directly onto our property. That is both a violation of the town policy, it's a violation of multiple state laws. If you want, I can read them to you. I have them in front of me. No. Okay. Not necessary. So that is something else that needs to be addressed as well, not just the center of the road. Okay. okay. And these alterations are illegal at a state level. They have nothing to do with the town, but it is the town's legal obligation to enforce those laws. And I can read you the legislation. I don't, I don't, I don't need you to read me anything. Thank you. Point taken. Yes. Yeah, I just want to say if, there, if we are being accused of doing illegal things, uh, we would like to hear about that from law enforcement, not just people, our neighbors, saying that. I can show you the video. So we appreciate that. That's how okay, guys, please things. please address your comments to me, not to each other. Yeah. Okay, two things. Law enforcement was involved. They said go to the town on the road. But that's not what my concern is. I help them place the rocks where they are because of spin out, digging holes, and right where you saw the rocks went down the road, the reason they're there is because there was video of the spin outs over and over where they had to call the police. And that's not that's the not the travel portion of the road. It's where you see the rocks going down now. Yeah. Um, so that being said, if they move the rocks back and this begins again, is that going to be a town issue to stop the nonsense? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm confused about what you're saying as the wrong. nonsense. People are driving on the grass off the... Spinning out where I think you saw one the car's almost... Excuse me. The car's almost hanging off. To, to spin out, to, to alter the waterway, to go down on the other property. Just... Um, yeah, Victor. Just for my own information, you had... You had those metal poles up there, kind of like in front of, you know, from your driveway up to that pin that's above Zach's house. Is that what you believe to be? That's what the, the where the, that, that that's is, the, the right of way? That is the right of way if you were to go from a straight line all the way across. Okay. We, but we if theoretically that. it's the right, you know, the right of way? No. Okay, so. Not, not entirely, because there is, the, so the string line that I put up, was to show the where from e, from one pin to another, so you could see where the bridge comes across and how far that portion has been moved, which makes it look like the road goes farther to the left and cuts back. Yeah. That's what that string line was for. We get that there's a natural curvature coming up to the bridge to an extent. The problem is that, and nobody here can argue, when they build a bridge anywhere, this side and this side are perfectly square to each other. That string line was to show how far one side to the other. You can uh, measure off that other pipe again, like you did. But, but with that know. said, it looks like right now that those pins, uh, those steel posts, are pretty close to what you would think is would be in the right of way. Right. You're talking about the, the, the those three metal things. That yeah. Yeah, that were down. yeah. Yeah. Okay, but my question is yeah. then, why is the stones? So far inside of that. It wasn't 22 feet, it's 20, 24.9 foot from I mean, those stones are roughly seven, seven eight feet off the center line. I think they're talking about the poles that for what, what Okay, Victor's, wait a minute, I think we're getting confused. Yeah. We're talking about two different things. Yeah. You're, the you're poles, talking, are, the poles are 22 feet from the center, correct? No, okay. 24.9, 24 foot 9 inches. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. but the stones are inside that row of poles. Correct. And the reason they're there, you don't want that torn up. I don't want the road to continue to shift, shift in. in that direction. That's but I'm that thinking. is the way it is right now. That is well within the right to do that. To, tr to drive? To drive on that grass. It is not well within anyone's right to intentionally spin out and tear if, up the grass. If, the if it's in the, the right, road, it's like, let, let, let me give you another example on McCullough Hill Road. Two of them. There's one up above the, the old Tessier place. They don't like you to drive on their lawn either. 
and they've narrowed the, they got the little road, they got an edge there. But theoretically, you could drive right over that. Vic, would it be acceptable if I took my truck, put it on your front lawn, and peeled out until you had nothing but dirt underneath my Yes, chair? if it was within that right away. Yes, it okay. would. I, I just want to make sure that the, the questions are directed to the chair. Yeah, so correct. Yeah. So, and I, I guess I would also like to ask you, Peter, if someone were to, and this speaks to, I think, their concern about spinning out and things like that. So, like, I noticed, for example, during mud season, on a class four, on a class three road, that there will be trucks that love to go mudding and fast and ruin the roads, right? What do we do? Like, what jurisdiction do we have to deal with those people? None, right? I mean, so how, so what jurisdiction would we have to deal with someone allegedly peeling out in the 22 feet? Well, here's. Well, I can read the, the red. Okay. okay. To you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have two suggestions for this. So in our class four road policy, it says from time to time, we will maintain, grade, whatever the road, which I will wholeheartedly admit on many class four roads, we've been very inconsistent about doing that. But as far as I'm concerned, the resolution to this is to uh, grade the road wider and make it so it looks like road so it isn't grass and it's within the 22 feet and at the same time potentially getting to your previous comments Stephen if the road right now is pitched so the water only runs one way which is to say towards your land and away from uh, the French's land we should probably regrade that road so it's crowned up a little bit and half the water goes one way and half the water goes the other way, which is the way it would normally be in town. It is not right for the road to be dumping all the water on one side of the road and not on the other side of the road. Yes? So I just want to say I completely agree. Um, my only issues were things being in the road to make it hard, because you can see the road's pretty narrow. It's like a, a one-lane road. Yep. Um, it's been like that as long as I can remember, but when you start putting things in it, it, it takes away, so it makes it harder. Um, so my only concern is like things in, and if we want to make it 22 feet, totally fine with that. Um, I do think it would be helpful if it was defined, like you said, make it wider so that it's clear where the actual road is. Where the road is, is. yep, yep, yes. So I also agree, I think it does, it is in need of a rebrade. Um, that part where it was mentioned where it gets slopes, cross teams happen. Um, so that's that section right where you kind of crest between um, where, where our property, where the French property yeah. joins. Um, I also agree that it is a concern when people put things in the road. And so as we had discussed um, a, a bunch last week when we had the select board over, we did our part and we moved our rocks to the side where it is within that 11 yeah. foot from the side of the road. We would kindly ask that the same, that our, our neighbors do the same in respect and, and move their rocks back. Yep. Can I address the, yep. what Steve said? And Steve, with all due respect, I mean, I, yes, you do have a right to do that if that was the case on my property. It's like at your property or in front of Zach's, I would not drive out on that green grass with my car. I would stay in the center because I respect everybody down there. As but I understand some people don't, and you know I don't. I don't know what you do about that, but it's not just driving over grass; it's going back and forth on purpose. I think that's what the problem is. I don't understand what you mean going back and forth, um, zigzagging down the road intentionally to, to to make it to vandalize the property. That's, that's take it down to the dirt. Excuse me. Yeah, that did below the dirt yeah. is not mud season. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I Go ahead, guys. There's a difference, so, the, between what you were talking about. So it sounds like, Vic, you're talking about to the edge of the road, the, the right of way versus the roadway. Because oh. those posts was the edge of the right of way. Correct. Right. So n uh. not like the, the traveled roadway. So it sounds like, and I don't know if there's been issues. I haven't brought up anything in the right of way, so like outside of the road. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any issues with anything they have outside of the road. So that would be a different topic if you're saying we can't have anything in the right of way versus the 22 feet. The, the terms, sorry, 
yeah. I should have raised my hand, but I think the people aren't being clear as to the difference between the right of way and the roadway. Correct. And the, my understanding hearing the conversations here is that the expectation from the town would be that there would be nothing placed in the roadway, that 22 foot span from the center of the road. So yes. the rocks, you know, on both sides would be removed. Um, uh, Zach and Evelyn have moved theirs out. So the expectation, at least for me, and I assume the rest of the board would be that the rocks that you and Stephen have placed on the right hand side, if you're traveling out, would be removed out of that 22 foot right of or roadway. Okay. Placing things in the right of way um, is a different conversation. Yeah, and that's what when he was talking about the when Vic said something about the the right of way. So those posts, I'm assuming that's what you guys were talking about. Those right. three ones. So that's that's where the right of way ends. Right. So okay, I, yeah, I want to no. make sure you guys are just saying the roadway and not outside right. of the 22 feet. And that's what generally, we're talking about. generally. People put all kinds of stuff right. in the right of way. Okay, right. they park vehicles in the right of way. They put machinery in the right of way. Who knows what in the right of way? And the only thing that applies to that is that it's important for everybody to understand is, yes, you can do that. But if the town comes to you and says, we're going to be doing maintenance work down there, we need you to move your backhoe, tractor, car, truck, whatever it is, out of the right of way. You need to get it out of there because the town does. It's your land. But the town does control it. Yeah. But other than that, you know, you can use the right of way as if it's your land, which it is. Stephen. So you've asked me not to read the legislation, so I won't. But I will ask that I be allowed to cite the actual legislation. So if anybody chooses to, they can go look it up because it seems to be a question as to how the select board enforces these things happening. So I will say, Stephen. Stephen, we do know how to we do know how to enforce it, and we've looked into it. Okay. So if it comes to an enforcement action in the future, we know what well, to my do. My concern is that it keeps being said that they don't. You, the board members keep saying they don't know how they're going to how they would enforce no, it. No, so we know how we enforce. We issue a ticket. That's what we do. Well, that's that's actually not the entire process. So all right, I will, I will Stephen. Cite if it these, comes up, will we will deal with it correctly. If you want to submit that to be part of the minutes tonight. That's fine, but I would appreciate not having you read it to us. Mark okay. has a question behind you. Yes. Yeah, a lot, you know, if you look at the abutment and the coast to them, on the other side, there's a pretty good chunk of legs, which is why they located the abutments there. It looks like it was an old 12 foot wide deck on that thing. But uh, just as far as the town's concerned, any future development, you might, you know, it's Developable land back through there. Keep in mind now, if you're going to cut that road, what the approach is going to look like in the future. Because you want to come onto that bridge square. He's know? saying if we were to ever develop. Yeah. I guess when you hear what Mark said, if you develop the land, you, you might want to keep in mind what? Proper approach to the bridge above. Proper alignment of the, okay. of the bridge. Okay, thank you. Because if you cut it now and then you find out later, then you got litigation. Well, there is, there is a secondary concern, and I, I don't want to get into it tonight, but uh, I believe in the future the select board is going to be talking about what happens, what happens to that road beyond your uh, properties, the other side of the, uh, of the river. Uh, as you probably know, if you read our much-referred-to uh, Class 4 road policy, we are responsible for bridges and culverts on Class 4 roads. So theoretically, it's the town's obligation to either put a culvert in there or put another bridge in there or whatever. We obviously haven't done that. Shame on us. But the fact of the matter is, does it make sense in the long run to have the road the other side of the brook or the creek or whatever we call it continue to be a class four road or should it be a town trail or should it be thrown up entirely? That's an open that's an open question. And that's kind of why, why we haven't dealt with the bridge, is we haven't dealt with that other issue. Our, our policy generally has been that we like to keep control of town right away. So 
you know, I would think we would consider making it a trail, not a class four road and not replace the bridge, but I don't know that that's the case. Peter? Yes. I'm sorry. But I, just, I just would like to speak to the location of the road. I've been in town for oh, almost 45 years. And the farm used to plant corn down in the field, just down at the end of the road right there. And I've been on that road a lot. Uh, not recently, maybe, I don't know, within the last month or so I might have. Anyway, the, the road now uh, is pretty much in the same location as I've always remembered it. So as far as the location of the road, I think it's, it's, it is where it is, and I don't think it's ever been changed. Not in my short memory, but I just wanted to speak to that location, that's all. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Eric. Yes. <laughs> if everyone mm -hmm. agrees that this is the path forward, which is to say regrade the road, mm -hmm so that the water, it's a more level and the crowned up a little bit and the water flows both ways and potentially widen the road mm -hmm. some reasonable amount. I'm not saying to 22 yeah. feet, but make it, a, make it a little wider and make it clear. And we're gonna have to just to grade it. Maybe. Right, where the road is. Is that potentially, I hate to even say that, is that I something can try that to could fit be done in. this I, fall? You know, we've, we've got a lot going on, but. I know. I could try to fit it in somewhere. It would just be great for these folks after all this time to see some action from us. And if we don't have, keep on having days like today. I know. I understand. Have we also sent a letter to both parties about the rules of... Um, they both have received copies have received of the... It, okay. of, I believe you, you all have copies of the Class 4 road policy and the Towns Highway Ordinance, do you not? Saved on my phone. It's Okay. No, but, I, that, you've got but it, we everyone? sent you letters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I thought. No, I thought we were going to send them letters. Yeah, I'm reminding I thought them. that. Well, uh, I'm, rem I'm, I'm reminding them at this meeting that that is the policy and they have it. I don't think we need to send them a letter. Okay. I mean, that's just me. If you think we should send them a letter, we can send them a letter. But it's going to be in our minutes. They were all. They were all here, hearing what we had to say. You don't think no, that's sufficient? No I, no, I guess it's fine. I just. Okay, yeah, Frederick. Frederick. Can maybe we just r run through precisely what's in the minutes as far as the listing to itemize everything that's going to happen. So we have Eric. The rocks are going to be moved back. Those are on the east side. Yep. Um, town will consider possibly the culvert in the future and the future of the, the, the extending Class 4 road that might be a trail. And no one is to move, manipulate, or interfere with the road the right of way bit? Roadway. The roadway. 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 The roadway, not roadway. the right of way. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Maybe a line about, I think that folks are skating around the edges about neighbor to neighbor harassment, and that would be a civil dispute. Um, so that would be outside of the select board's purview. Correct. Correct. Um, and then I just, I'm really sorry, you guys, that for everybody involved, it's not fun. And to ask permission before making any adjustments to the road. So, um, and then next step for the select board at that point are? For the road crew to do their best to get down there as soon as possible but, and regrade the road, which includes widening it somewhat. And then future agendas won't have me road on it. Unless something new develops, correct? It'll be Mead, the conversation about what happens with Mead Road the extended portion past the bridge abutment. Gotcha. Because because right now, Bridget, our policy says we need to replace that bridge. Okay. Or put a or put a culvert in there. Okay. And we haven't done that. So we're in violation of our own road policy. So I think that summarizes it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's on the tape and uh, also in will be in our minutes. And if you guys have any questions, uh, you're not shy. You're not shy about reaching out. But I really would encourage you to uh, take this to heart. The town, we hate getting involved in, in things like this. We like people to be able to get along and be, uh, and be good neighbors. So uh, Evelyn's nodding her head. Yes, I've seen you nod your head. 
Yes, Samantha, Stephen, a little less so maybe, but uh, come on, guys. Go along with whatever you, you guys decide. Yes, Emma. I just wanted to recognize to the uh, explain also to the board that um, from Zach and my perspective, the offer to uh, participate in a conflict resolution with Montpelier Community Justice Center is, uh, is still open, so we would still welcome um, if our neighbors would like to participate in that with us. Okay. Okay. Yes. And if you don't want to send a letter, it's right on the website for the road policies. They've got it right on the website. If, if well, we and our and our minutes and our minutes right will right also there. be there. Uh, yeah. Will also be there. So I think it's pretty well, uh, pretty well documented. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you very much for your patience and understanding. Montpelier Volunteer Fire Department Joint Meeting. How about the Middlesex, Middlesex? Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Montpelier. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'm a little tired. I've had a long day. It's I apologize. <laughs> uh, that may not be my last mistake tonight, so bear with me. Certainly not mine. Thank you. Uh, total calls to date is 66. Uh, we've had four calls the last month. Ow. One mutual aid out. Um, zero mutual aid in. Max members responding is four. Minimum is three. Or an average of 3.5. Uh, engine one has been out twice. Uh... Rescue one has been out once. All the others have not. Uh, let's see. The 24th of August, there was a tree on a power line burning in jo on Jonesbrook Road. Huh? Also, there was a car fired, but it was canceled. There was no fire found. Um, on the 30th, there was a one-car accident on the interstate. And on the 9th, there was a two-car accident on the interstate. Uh, last week, we did training on our with our new um, hydraulic extraction tools um let's see the new rescue update north Hyde park truck is still being built um fast squad calls we have a total of 18 for the month and five of them were medical only and the clear water filtration system was installed september 1st and it's working. And it's working. Good. Yep. How's the heating system? Well, we haven't been running it yet. Okay. <laughs> you saw my email about them. Uh, uh, yes, just schedule. Yes, yes. They're going to schedule a walkthrough okay. for, um, for that. Yep. Yes. Oh, that's yes. good. Um, the, so the truck's being built for North Hyde Park, but do we have a timeline as far as like we're hoping next like month? Somewhere? That's what they told us. I have not personally talked to them to see where they're at with it. Jeff was the one in communication with them, and he's gone right now, but he'll be back in another week. I'm sure they're anxious to get their new truck, and we're anxious to get our truck. So. Yeah, I was yeah. Just, just thinking timeline and, yep. and no, I going you. out the door yeah, and the whole, <laughs> the whole nine yards. So. Vic has a question. Yes, Victor. Um, the... the, the, the uh, what did you call it when you used the, the tools, the extraction tools? Mm -hmm. That was over at Baldox, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. They gave us a car to cut. They gave you, <laughs> so how do you just, I hate to be stupid, but what, you just, they just, you, they just give you a car and you, you rip it apart? Yeah. That's you exactly what happens. Do you put one of your volunteers in or do you use a dummy? <laughs> oh, sometimes we, yeah, we do training that way too, getting yeah. them out. Yep. Yeah. Well, it just acts no, excitement. Ex absolutely. Oh, right. yeah. Thank you. They're looking for a volunteer, Vic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went into a burning building. You can go into a car. Yeah. Anything else for the fire department? No, it's all good. Okay, great. Just just to be clear, the heating system is working, marginal but working, right? It's working right now. I mean, I we have not run it yet. We've not had to run the heat yet. So, yes, it was working when we stopped running the heat. Well... I would suggest to you sometime in the near future yes. to turn it on and make well, sure it's... Well, it's getting chillier. Out, so. Right. Make sure it's functioning because yeah. I can tell well, you... Well, I know we get hot water and it's all in the same system. Yeah, that's a good that's a good sign. So. Anyway. Okay. okay, good. Well, I think I'll try to get them to prioritize visiting you before they visit the town hall. Yeah, you just let me know to... when. I don't know if it's going to come through Sarah. Is that a heating system? Remember. 
No, it's a, um, the uh, um, part of the MERP, the Municipal Energy Resilience Plan grant. Mm -hmm. You have to have um, a level. You have to have a level review of audit. your energy, like a whole energy audit from. Um, and it has to be a level two, level I think, two. when you're applying for MERP. So, um, so they're gonna. We were approved for just two buildings fire department and the town hall, but not the town shed, unfortunately. <laughs> I think they just had two. The many. one that needs it the most. Right. Well, <laughs> maybe. <okay. laughs> I don't know. Are we? Uh, I'm, I'm sure the town shed wouldn't uh, pass a board or trust. I was just going to suggest that we uh, re ask the question that. You know, based on their recommendations, if we were to go and make any kind of a replacement there, that it could potentially be wrapped up once they lay their recommendations on it. That, you know. It sounded like potentially if they, if we can get them in there before we have to replace it and they can make the recommendation, we might be able to retroactively cover the cost of it. But we, we can't just go in now without having them do the recommendation first. Yeah, so let's get them in there as soon as we I can. know there's been yeah. some flip-flop on those questions yeah. when we've asked them on the other yeah. grants and whatnot. I think just re-asking uh, re that question. To That's get, why I want to get them in there yeah, first before the town hall. Again. Although the town hall is breaking down, too. So, okay. Yeah, well. Maybe they do it all in one day. Okay. <laughs> let's get them in there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, highway report, gentlemen. Unsealing bids for safety improvements on East Hill and Center Roads with a contractor award possible action likely. Yes. Yes. So all the little bid, all the bids are in those envelopes. Um, you'll notice that those envelopes are unsealed. Could you just just save the envelopes? <laughs> <laughs> Is this like Christmas? <gasps> yeah. Of course. I also those, my little bid sheet. Steve has those review things. those bids. I, have, I think from the FEMA standpoint, they wanted to know what uh, a cost estimate from us yeah. were. And I did do a, a detailed cost estimate. And, and it was uh, just over $90,000. 90? Yes. Okay, wait, so this is a bid for East, the improvements on East Hill and Center, you said is, is just about East, 90? That's right. Okay. I've only gotten three of them. One just came in just before. Of course. Apples to apples? That's all right. So do you, uh, are you supposed to be? Go ahead, Steve. I just want yeah, to say, I mean, you know, the select board absolutely reviews the bids. Uh, I do have a lot of questions, and I think that Eric and Beck and I are going to have to make quite a few phone calls tomorrow morning uh, to answer some questions on these bids. So that gets to my next question. At this point in time, you're not ready to make a recommendation? Absolutely not. Okay. So I think what we need to consider doing is... Uh, let uh, Eric and Victor do their due diligence uh, and come back to us with a recommendation, and then we can have a quick uh, special meeting to uh, make the decision and award the contract. Mm -hmm. I would hate to wait another two weeks to go ahead with this. It might be winter in two weeks. Who knows? I don't understand why me as a layperson is asked to score on this. You as a what? A layperson. Oh, I see what you're saying, Liz, that why are we being called to fill out this form? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not the person, like, you don't want to well, I thought that collect though. all these and go, oh, this person scored the highest, therefore we have to choose this person, and we don't know what we're talking about. And is that as far as the, this one no, is fully complete? No, I think, I complete, think uh, Eric and Victor are going to that. Well, this fill one doesn't. I don't know. What is it that FEMA wants tally. us to do? Jason doesn't. No, uh, that, and that's my understanding. That's what you were going to be filled out. I don't know. We'll tell it though. Okay. Yeah, Sarah has something to say. So, the way this works with FEMA is they do want the legislative body to go through the bids. The idea is just transparency. You can have a conversation about this, but there should be a scoring system where you think they want a scoring system. They want you to get to 100%. And so, if you start off with like price, maybe they're not apples and oranges. 
because some people have not, there should be like a lump sum bid for this, like 95,000 or 100,000 or whatever. So you could start with a price and put the price in for each one. But you know, after Steve goes back and talks to some people and say, you didn't give me a lump sum bid, you're supposed to do it this way or that way. That might be some flexibility. So if the person is the cheapest, they get, they get the 40% for, for that price category. Now you're moving backward. Now you're having conversations like we did with the FEMA buyout, 28 Rich Road, which is, you know, the general, uh, the, so let's start with this one. When do they, when's their start stop, stop time? When they, can they be done? Who can start first? Well, if someone says they can start next week, great. They get a bigger, higher score than someone who doesn't. FEMA wants to see that you have approached this in the most fair and balanced way. The subjectivity comes in category A, which is quality of work, and reputation. When we chose Play Point, for example, to be the asbestos consultant, one of the things that was a value was when Randy said, they've got a good reputation in town, they're known, you know, we, we work, people work with them, that I, I highly recommend them. I would like a score of like five or whatever. So that's, uh, I'm just, just telling you what FEMA wants. And if you're gonna say, why are we doing this when we don't have the skills to do this? Welcome to our world. This is the raw reality of dealing with a disaster. But we don't so, Sarah, have to the, go by the The part order. that I'm confused about is they want each one of the select board members no. to fill out the sheet? No, I think that's no. something that you guys talk about. Just Can I speak to that? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, what I expected to see is these gentlemen to fill that's, out the sheet and present exactly it to us and then we approve it. I think that okay. uh, and one well, we're, just not we're going that. to be the ones that are going to be getting the answers to the phone calls, yep. which is going to yeah. do some of this. As far as those percentages, yeah, you know, that's fine. I mean, I think so. that's true. If you had better, if you had more complete bids or something, you guys could work on the process right now. So you could say, here's Corporation A. This is what this is. Come, this is, you know, this is the their price. You know, they can work through it. Other towns do it all the time. Right. Okay. Yeah. So should we designate like Victor to be our select board member representation? So you're going to fill this out. These guys are going to do. No, I know, Maybe but. That's really easy. Yeah, Randy knows too. Uh, two things to that to that point, you know, I think we could say, you know, Eric, Victor, and Steve will score the candidates for mm -hmm. the proposals and bring that back to the select board as a whole. Right. Um, I I don't know if this is in place, so I guess this is a question, and if it's not in place, it's a recommendation to say. Um, if we have questions, we should set some timelines to, you know, say, okay, we're gonna ask questions for all contractors and produce that list of questions by X day and look for response, you know, 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever after the fact. Um, and if select board members have questions as they do review any of this, those, those should be submitted to this group going back out to the contractors within that time frame to not hold anything up. I, I'm looking at the three of us, as far as Eric, Vic, and myself, reviewing these bids and calling the contractors tomorrow, getting the answers to those questions, do the scoring of what we're supposed to do for FEMA, and coming up with recommendations to the board. Yeah, sounds Perfect. great. Tomorrow. That sounds great. That sounds, that's I'm, I, as time, I mean, winter's here. Right. Sure. We're, yeah. I don't think we should waste any time in awarding this. this so we'll summer. have to have a special meeting. Yeah. Yes. This, one more thing. So this is the, the, the template that I gave you is something that was coming, given to us by uh, FEMA that we were supposed to use. So I, I don't think FEMA would have a problem with that at all. It covers two things. It has the experts going through and figuring out who is, you know, can answer the questions like Liz said that you can answer, and it has the legislative input. It's a win-win. You're, you're in. Do you want to award a special meeting for Thursday night? Thursday night. Thursday night. Or Thursday during, or whatever. Yeah, let's have it like at lunch lunchtime. I, whatever you want. I don't know. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's up, to you, it's up to you guys. Five o'clock in the morning. So if, Steve wants, if, Steve, if Steve's eager to go, then... I'd well, I think we're all eager to go, is the answer. So... Thursday night's tough for me. 
I could do something in the day in the day though if others could. Could we do it in the late afternoon sometime? Like a two thirty? Are you um, talking I later? I have an interview. I have an interviews between two and three, like four, basically. I could do it at four. That's the only thing. Yeah, I'm. You're, you're kidding. I'm tired. Well, up. do all of us need to be there? We just need a quorum. I think this is. I would really like all of us to be there Especially if we can be. What about tomorrow afternoon? Oh, well, is that going to give them enough time? Probably not. What about one Thursday? Um, I could do one on Thursday, actually. I don't think uh, during the day is good for uh, for me. It's good for us. Good for Eric. Uh, it's not uh, good. No, I think five o'clock is better. Six o'clock. Do you want to do it in the morning before before we all get started with our day? What's that? 8 a.m. 7.30. I could do a 7 o'clock. Oh, so it's 7.30, right. so whatever. I would have, would have to be on. 7 o'clock if it's me. I've got a meeting at 7.30. I'll tell seven you right eight. now, I won't be there at 7 o'clock. I'm not going to oh. be there at 7 o'clock either. <laughs> I'm in bed. You guys are tough. You don't work late at night. You don't work in the morning. When uh, do you work? All right, We're so, very tired. So um, if it is five, did it was it a I was I didn't want to do Thursday night but I can make it happen it, or is everybody else on the same page five o'clock on no Thursday? you can't do Thursday I can't do Thursday you can't do Thursday no no um so well, actually you should five o'clock tomorrow, tomorrow. Anyways, right? yeah for you we I would like us to have our stuff done tomorrow I mean if, if anybody in the select board has specific questions that they would like answered if they're different from ours. I mean, get in touch with us early, but. What about 4 p.m. tomorrow? Or 4.30 tomorrow? 4.30 tomorrow. Does that give you guys enough time, Steve and Eric? I could do something after 4 tomorrow. I would think so. I don't want it, but I will. 4.30 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not gonna I have an hour meeting, are you? I think it's gonna be a, f I mean, the only thing I can see happening is, and I hope it doesn't happen, but if you guys come back with your recommendation and a member of the select board has a question which is still unanswered, we might have to delay it further. But hopefully that will not be the case. Hopefully. So will, will everybody get materials prior to, like anticipating looking at email at like 3.30, meeting at 4.30? Is that, yeah, like that too early? Yeah. And then it's a big bang boom once we're on the phone. Do you think that these people aren't going to answer your calls and get back to you by, by the right time? Oh. I'm sure of it. They'll, they'll answer calls. You're sure that they won't? I'm sure they will. Yeah. You're sure they will? Okay. Mm -hmm. a lot of money. They it's want to work, they will. Yeah, I, I bet you they would answer. Okay. 4.30 p.m. tomorrow via yep. Zoom? Zoom. Via Zoom, yeah. With presence here in Town Hall in case anybody wants to participate. Okay. Will we, we anticipate something by email prior? Yes. Okay. My only question I, just... Boys. Okay, we're looking at these. Yeah is that there's one that's really under, and I, if there's any explanation that needs to be said why that is. He always is. He, he, he's the one that did our culverts. He's, he just works reasonable. All seasons? Is that the one? Yeah, I just wondered if there was anything no, different about Jason's it. No, that, that you're, you're looking at the all seasons. All seasons, yeah. I can answer that right now. Yeah. They did okay. not include any materials. Mm -hmm. The town was buying the materials, so that puts their that puts their bid up to like 81,500. Gotcha. Okay. gotcha. Right. And that'll be more evident tomorrow. Right. I can be at that meeting if, if Victor would like me there to answer questions, or if Victor's going to have all the answers anyway. Usually. Okay, so tomorrow, if, if you're going to If after, I mean, assuming? all I would say, I guess, Steve, is if right. after you guys have these discussions tomorrow, if you think it'd be useful for you to be there, Steve, it'd be great if you could be there. If you guys are in perfect agreement and uh, Victor's ready to carry the football, that's fine. But it's a Zoom meeting, so you, that's fine. you can do it from the barn, you can do it from the tractor, you can do it from... We can do it right from here, right? Yeah. Right. Is it the same old link? Well, Sarah will send same out an invite. Link. Yeah, if you can circulate the link, that'd be great. Thank I'm you. Do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go to front page four. So this is um, four thirty. We said. Yes. Put our paperwork out. Four thirty p.m. I said to seven. No way. To so like five, right? Or five thirty. What? How long is this meeting going to take? Ten minutes. Oh. Right. So long as everything's lined up. Slate it for a half an hour and. Yeah, set it up for half an hour. Okay. 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 Four thirty to five p.m. Meeting special meeting. Okay. 
Okay, good. Okay. Anything else, gentlemen? I have one thing to bring up, and I don't take it with great zeal to do it. I mean, I'm not real happy about it, but the amount of time I'm spending on this is getting a little bit long. Yeah? And you've got two people. You've got Eric, they're paying. You've got Steve, you're paying with no disrespect. I mean, I don't really want a job. But, I mean, I don't really want the money. No, no, no. So, so what are you saying? You would rather have you would rather have Steve and Eric present this tomorrow, or Eric? Or you want to be paid for your work? I don't really. But I mean, if it's if it's an extra assistance, I'm happy to help with some of the stuff that you're helping yeah. with now. If that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, no, I, the only thing I don't want a W two. That's all, or whatever you call it. And there's no way I can do it without it. I just don't want one. It's counterproductive. So back to Peter's question, just, just, we you know, if they, pull even you out. mileage would help, but. Oh, I think you should, you could claim mileage. But, but I'll do this tomorrow, free gratis, and we'll go, we'll go from there. But I think. Well, you could I, I, I think you should definitely claim mileage. Huh? Yeah. You should definitely claim mileage. Okay. Okay. Is that riding with Eric too? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't count. You have to buy He's lunch. In the trail. That. Somebody's riding um, right. I mean, the other thing I would say, Victor, is, you know, we've got our paid guys doing this. You know, stay out of it to the extent that you can. I mean, I value you very much I being do. involved I in do. this. I do. I mean, I do. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, I do. You know, and, but if they want some input, I'll. I do. I mean, okay. I, I've been, yeah. Okay. But I definitely Good. think, from a road commissioner standpoint, it's important that he be involved in a bid. Yeah. Yes. Right. I mean. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Let me know okay. When you want to okay. Start. Anything else, gentlemen? No. Um, I guess I got to ask the question. I don't know what the, what, or how it's supposed to work, but we are in dire need of an excavator. No. What? What right. happened? Nothing's broke yet, but it's not far from it. Yeah, I heard it go by the house the other day. Um, so I guess what is the, I'm getting bids together. How do we go about doing this? Are we, we're due for one this year, aren't oh, we? we are. Randy? I think that's what the, I believe that's right. I think we've talked about sure. Yay for the capital spending plan. Right. <laughs> Give me a minute and I'll pull it up. So what I would, what I would say is, Along with everything else, we should be working on that. I mean, the good news is we can uh, buy the excavator, borrow the money, no payments till next year. Right, Dorinda? Well, it'll be, it depends when he takes possession of it. Right, 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 right. Oh, no. It would have to be after July. It doesn't I mean, require a time We haven't vote. got anything. We haven't, the voters have haven't approved it, number one. Because yeah. the voters will have to approve this because it's not a truck. It's a piece of oh, equipment. Oh, a piece of equipment. Yep. So it's, okay. we would have to take, if it's an emergency situation, what we'd have to do is take out a one-year loan and then go to the voters with it to have it go to a seven-year loan. I just want to find out the, the process. That's all. Okay, well, that's, that's, what we're yep. hearing, that's what we're hearing right now. Yep. Um, I guess the question is, uh, I know we've been renting an excavator when yeah, we need recently, one. Yeah, just recently, yeah. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want the other one to break and have a, a ginormous bill of something we're just getting rid of. It doesn't make financial sense to me. Well, and it renders it virtually worthless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, you're, you're But I mean, isn't it. anybody who's going to take that in on trade look at that and subtract the cost of redoing the tracks and the... Yes, they do. That's all yeah. factored into the trade. Yeah, I think yes. there was like a, I think the last conversation that I remember having, there was like a $30,000 value yep. or something like that to yep. the work that needed to be done on the yep. undercarriage of that, if, I, if I'm remembering yep. properly. Yep. Aren't they like 38, 40? And... There, yeah, I've, I've got a few different uh, quotes back for trade-in. Uh, they range from 30 to 40,000. Used. But that's for the no, trade-in value. For, oh, trade that's, for the that's, trade -in. that's what they're going to give us for trade-in. Are, are you planning new or used? Sorry, I interrupted. New. Just because we keep it for 15 years. 
Isn't it 15 years old now? That's what the yeah. last one was. 16 was what yeah. was yeah. in here. What yeah. is budgeted for it again? Uh, 200 is the replacement value um, with an estimated $30,000 uh, trade in value. So a hundred dollars um, And we still need voter for one hundred and seventy. That was two hundred. Um, I thought it was anything longer than a year. I think it's the it's the it has to do with the indebtedness. Uh -huh. the, if it has to do with the indebtedness. Right. Um, it, I think it's be because we're going over five years. I believe. Oh, that's the issue. Okay. That's the issue. Okay. Um. Yeah, we. Um, yeah, we're renting one right now. I I just like to talk it out here. I don't know. Uh, we're getting into. Uh, we don't usually use it much in the winter time. I don't know how much of a yank we are. We're well, that's what I mean. We if we can, we might not need to take possession of it this year. Right. I mean, we only got another month or so, and then we usually start parking it. And, and a lot of our work is going to be the safety work, so yep. we won't need it there. Mm -hmm. So would you plan to just rent in between when spring I mean, hit and July? Or, 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 or try to take possession maybe in the springtime? Take it in the springtime, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, if you could get it on to the March voting. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't long, make sense. How it doesn't long, what's, make the, sense. what's the delay when we order it? Do we know? Uh, no, it's not very long. I mean, like so truck. if we got approval on town meeting and the and the week following we placed the order, it, we would have the excavator in time. Oh yeah, I would think so. Okay. Well, I no. like that. I like having. No point. We should yeah. bring up also that we've been talking about the. You said two hundred thousand. That's what is in the capital yeah. assessment. Well, you can save a hundred thousand dollars if you buy a little bit smaller one. Than the one the yeah. comparable to the one we got now. There's options out there that we're we're working through right now. Yeah, like a class lower, a couple classes lower. I mean that conversation's been kicked around a couple different times. Sounds like there was a little bit of a divide amongst. Well, folks. I think the I think the question is so the question is if we only from time to time need a bigger excavator or an excavator with a longer reach or whatever it is, is it more cost effective to us to rent that when we need it and have a smaller excavator, which is what does the work for us 75 sure. or 80% of the time? That would be my question. Yeah. Well, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't that, know enough about the workload and how work you use out. it. That's all stuff we're going to work out. I just wanted to know the process so we can move forward yeah. so I can plan for it. I think. I think what, that we're, what we're saying is the process should be let's through the budget process, which will be coming right up here, get some refined yep. numbers yep. so that we can get it on the town meeting day warning, yep. plan, on, plan on doing that, okay. and then plan on ordering it as quickly after that as we can. Sounds good. Are you and hopefully by then we have our trailer, right? We have it now. We do? Yeah. Good. Yep. And you'll be getting bids for both classes? Yep. I've got information on both. Great. Yep. The, uh, I think what Eric's saying but not saying is that we'll have to get together and uh, we'll figure this out, what we want to do, what would be best for the town. Yep. And then we'll, we'll propose it to you, propose it to the select board yeah. at a future date. Yeah. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. Me. Yeah. During the, so as we're working on our budget, that's the yeah. appropriate time to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I just so wanted to on see our what we needed to do on our capital spending plan, Randy. What else do we have up for next year? If we push this off until next year, what else are we running into? Big truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got a the replacement of the international um, in twenty five. Um, that's at the tune of one hundred ninety five five. That's with the expected trade in. So we we have two hundred and thirty thousand on it without any trade in. Um, so I don't know what truck prices have done. Um, I bet you it's more than that now, but yeah, um, just because they they've jumped wicked. So but I mean, that's, but that's five, not four. That's in twenty five. So that's, that's another yes. year away. Yes. yes. So we wouldn't have two of them in um, one year. As, so. so as far as as far as um, 
vehicles. Um, looks like everything else is just typical, you know, paving, uh, town hall fund. Mm -hmm. What about the wheel of tobacco? Uh, that is set for. Let me see here. That's a Komatsu? Mm, yes. Cat. No, the loader. No, is. the cat, the backhoe. You want the backhoe? Yeah, the wheel loader okay. backhoe. That's oh, a yeah. uh, So that is set out in 28. Wow. Wow. It's a long way away. We've got replacement value of 125 for that. With, you know, and all these trade ins are basically just 15% of yeah, what's just... being carried. So. You don't put in those calculations, you don't have inflation, do you? Uh, there are on a separate sheet, um, oh, okay. but no, typically we're asking for, and in the annual process, we'll ask if there's been a major Updates. jump. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Should I give right. you what you need, Eric? Yeah. I was just want okay. to know the process. Uh, yeah, so and I, I agree with not breaking the it. excavator. I mean, no, I, I just, no, I didn't want to do it. The loader, just so you guys are aware, that Komatsu loader is set in 26. That'd be before that backhoe. So. Okay. Sarah, we didn't need to make a motion that we are assigning those guys to do the bids? No. Okay. No. Can I ask a question? Um, yes. And I don't know if you, have you seen the pipe bill come in for the paving yet? Came in today, right? Yeah, I believe yes. so. So it's over what the bid is. Is that so? <laughs> I'll have to go back and look. I didn't really look at it. I saw okay. it come in, but I didn't really look at it. Okay, well, it came in higher than what the bid was, so I was wondering if... Materials. Ah. Isn't that because of... Oh, it might have been because of the, the terrace. Terrace tree wasn't added into that original bill. Is, is that what... That's yes. what I wondered if that's what it was. Correct. So, okay. So that's... Yeah, yeah, because I forgot about that. Correct. Okay. I, like I said, I didn't look. I saw it, but I didn't. Sit right. Down. No, and I just didn't know if you had seen the bill yet. I just know it came in higher than what I was yep. expecting. Okay. Okay. So we can get that grant submitted. Yep. That's why I, I grabbed the paper, but I didn't. Okay. I didn't because sure I paid the first bill today, but I didn't pay the second bill because before I paid this. Yeah. The second bill, I wanted to get an okay. Yeah. So we'll get a check done for that, yeah. and then we can. I'll get submit it. that. Yep. And you can submit it. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and we can get our money back. And then we can get our money. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Okay. We could certainly use it. Anything else on the highways? No. So yeah, we don't have anything. Are, are we? And I have not looked at these bids at all. Are they all pretty much ready to go? I mean, is this work that can be completed this fall? Do we yes. know? Hopefully. That's our intent. Yep. Okay. That's the question we'll ask tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Because again, I just want to say, and I mean, uh, it just East Hill Road because I drive back and forth on it every day. I mean, it's going to be dangerous as hell if we don't get that yes, work done before uh, winter. And there are other places in town too. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Treasurer's report considering approval of a three ooh million ooh line of credit. Yep. Trace the previously approved one point five million line of credit from Community Bank to pay for emergency and road reconstruction due to the July 9, 10, 2023 20, natural disaster with the expectation of FEMA in the state of Vermont reimbursement for much of these costs, action likely. Yep. Brenda. It's here. Yay. Yeah. Um, there's three places for you guys to sign. And the motion has to, I think, same as last time, Sarah. I just copied a piece of it. Current expense note line of credit for three million for one year, the purpose and the lender. You got all that, right? I have a uh, current expense note line of credit of three million dollars from Community Bank NA for a term length not to exceed one year to pay for expenses related to repairing damage from the July 8th and 10th, 2023 storm. Uh, flooding incident in anticipation of reimbursement from FEMA, the state of Vermont, and possibly other sources permitting Peter Hood, a select board chair, to sign on board behalf, but we don't need that now. We don't need chair. that now. Scratch okay. that because the whole board's signing on it. All right. 
That's the motion. So the only other comment I have before I ask for a second on that motion is my understanding is the bank was friendly, nice, the bank is helpful. The reason I keep going after that bank is they were, you know, I came, I said, well, I, we want to ask for more. They said, how much more? And I said, double it. And they kind of went, Ugh. And I said, so, but then I just talked them through as to why. And they Thank said, you. no problem. That's great. I mean, that, that, that's, granted, it's what they should do, but I'll different. tell you, having spent a lot of time dealing with banks in my lifetime, it doesn't always go that way. No, so was, I just think it's important well, I for think it's the, us to know that it was handled that way. And at some yeah. point in time when you're talking to them, just tell them the board really appreciates their responsiveness have, to our request. I that's have, and I think they recognize our, what we keep in our bank account and, you know, that we, you know, we always have a good balance and... It's not like we look like we're struggling, and we have good audits. Yeah, so. all good. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. So, with that, is there a second to that? Can I can I just say something? Can we just add to the motion that this should replace? Or do you think it's necessary to say that this will replace the one point? Yes, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So people yeah. don't think we're taking out right. two of yeah. them. So I need somebody to make that motion, Randy. And is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. I don't know what it is. Uh, all those in favor of approving the three million dollar line of credit uh, note, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you. We all need to sign. We all need to sign in all these different places. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're on the back. Most of them are on the backs of where I have the tag. Yeah. 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 While you're signing, um, we did get our notice uh, this week for our payment to the schools. Yeah. $914,000 each quarter. Each quarter? Each quarter. Yikes. So, um, so. And when is that due, Dorinda? Higher than I thought it was going to come wait, in. Each quarter. Wait, we have to pay $900,000. Last year we paid eight thirty three. Each quarter. Wow. And there's nothing you can do about it. Not no. a thing. Not a which, thing. Which brings me to my next um, point is I sent you guys out um, the uh, tax appeal oh, both letter. Um, every time we have something like this, I mean, not that we've had that happen before, but we're paying that education rate. Does anybody know that? I mean, we're on the hook for it because these people are getting credits, and the same thing happens when we do error and emissions. You know, we're crediting these people, but all everything we're paying in is off the grand list that was submitted at the time. I, and I don't know enough about it whether there's any recourse to get any of that money back or not. If our grand list changed significantly enough over time, I mean, this one goes back to 2020. Actually, we'd be going back to the state to try to appeal the numbers that we've provided to them, right? I, mean, I, I remember, and I can't remember how long ago it was, but this question came up. And I believe we asked the League of Cities and Towns, and they said no, no, no recourse. So we just keep it all. We just got to we just got to suck it up, and we need to, when there, whether we're granting abatements or errors and omissions or whatever, um, it's on us, and hopefully, we can limit that. Okay. Well, um, I, I don't mind I don't mind making the call again and saying hey. Well, I don't know who you even talk. I don't know, you know, because it's decided by the state, right? No, but the question is, is, the, is there any recourse? Can we go back and refile our grand list with these changes? Uh, and I'm pretty sure the answer is no, no. we can't. Right. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to ask, right? I mean, if, we, <laughs> if we're in conversations with them... <laughs> Um, well, I'll, I'll get. The, I mean, the League of Cities and Towns will know. I don't want to right. call the tax department. Right. That would be a that would be an all day exercise. But because you know it, it's adding up. All these keep adding up, and that's a pretty. So the so the issues are errors. I'm pretty sure on the errors and omissions, they're going to say that's on us. Yeah. yeah. 
But on the on the uh, tax abatements. Not abatements. This is an appeal. This is an appeal, but the abatements a whole other conversation. Appeals, but the abatements do the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question is, in light of all this, our grant list is we believe significantly going to go down. Is there any opportunity well, to? Yeah, it keeps going down. I mean, at this point. Right. Which means our taxes have to go up. Which, Which means everybody else's, else's taxes way. go up. Yeah. Everybody's What's the main taxes. cause? Sorry. Pardon? When you say the when the list is changing, um, is there like one predominant reason over others? No, it's like this was a tax appeal that took, you know, went through years. the process for years to go through. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just um, wondering if there's if we're losing properties off the people off the ground. Well, house. you're going to lose if these houses the go people. up. It's or, all flood. Um, but they'll get captured in the grand list, that, you know, the taxes that go up for tax sale. But if anybody comes and asks for an abatement, that's where the Board of Abatement needs to decide how they're going to handle the town's portion versus the school portion, gotcha. which is the largest chunk of the money. Right. right. Yeah. And think about those towns, you know, that like Niagara Falls, where you just like, you keep just people no one living in these homes anymore, right? And then they have no tax base at all. Scary. We're not there yet, <laughs> thankfully. Okay. Um, anything else, Dorinda? I think that is it. Okay. Great work, Dorinda. Yeah. Yes, Dorinda. good work. Yeah, Saving yeah, the done. day. Okay, errors and omissions, revising the 2023 grand list to correct errors on parcels owned by Seth Stewart, Margaret Leone, and Lamoille Valley Transit listers to attend action likely. Okay, Seth Stewart, um, his land was subdivided in 2020. So when there was a sale in 2022, the PTTR didn't pull it up because it wasn't in both parts. Another subdivision error, like we talked about. The last same time. like the last one, yeah. Yeah, so there was a difference of um, $9,600 because 6.8 acres was showing up on the new folks that did get a tax bill, but it was also still showing up on his tax bill. So, so um, this is truly a reduction in our grand list. On that one. Yeah, okay. On that one. Um, Margaret Leon, Wait, she. Hold on, Shelley, can I just say something about that? Seth Stewart, there's a reduction of $9,600, but doesn't Chad Worsniak, isn't he paying the $9,000? He is He is paying the, the difference. He's, he, so there really isn't a reduction in the grand list. Right? Yeah, but it was. he got double bill. It was double but bill. Yeah. Both so, people got billed. So right. the other person did get their tax bill for the six and eight acres. Right. So yeah. there's no, there wasn't a reduction in the grand list for that. Right. Right. Um, Margaret Leon, she started a business in her home. So when it came across with Vermont High, that new system that still kind of got a lot of bumps, you have to change it not only on the grand list, but you'll have to change it in the 2023 grand list and force change it. And what happened when, when that was done, somehow it got put inactive. So it showed up as a grand list. She never got a tax bill, and luckily she called. Um, so we reactivated it. And there's a difference of $6,100 to more on the tax bill because of the business. So was, there was two things that had happened. One, she didn't get the tax bill. And the other is that she had a business that comes across from the state now with that new software. Um, so, she, so that's that's the other way. Right. So that's... There's, a, there's a little... I mean, believe me, bad news for her, but good news for us. Right. And uh, she understands that, and she's okay. I mean, uh, well, she doesn't yet because we haven't mailed it yet. We had to get this approved here. But she called and said she didn't receive a tax bill, right. so she's expecting one. That's yes. all I'm saying. Yeah. She may not be expecting the increase. She might not. She might be because she has a business now, yeah. thirty-three percent of business in her home. Yeah. So her tax bill is increasing, and the total tax bill is sixty-one hundred. Right. I see. And then the part of it is one, business. Okay. The last one, Lamoille Valley. Um, it was almost the same thing, is that there was 
contiguous property that was all tied to Connor Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And then when they sold to Lamoille, um, two tax bills were printed because prior, but it's even us, it still showed all active and not inactive. So Lamoille and Connor, Lamoille was getting a portion of the tax bill for so many acres and Connor was getting rest. And I guess for the last couple of years, Connor's been handing it over to Lamoille to pay. And I guess they talked to Sarah this year and said, you know, what's going on? So we did research on it. And Connor had the contiguous property still tied to their name, even though they sold all three three of the parcels that were contiguous together to Lamoille. Yeah, that one's a little. So there's like a 1.5 acre, 2.8 acre, and it ended up being 5.9 or something like that. That was total. And Lamoille was getting a portion of the tax bill, and Connor was getting the rest of it. They didn't pay it. They just gave it to Lamoille, which they paid for the last couple of years. But they brought it to our attention. And so we now we're just fixing it. Correct. But that doesn't affect. It doesn't affect any of the, the, the dollar amount. Right. That was just like a name change and okay. making the contiguous par parcel go to Lamoille and making it inactive so that he gets charged for the full amount. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the consequences aren't too bad on a net no. basis. And I did run a report for uh, because we were new listers on for the last year and a half for any subdivisions to make sure that this doesn't continue and everything looked okay. Great. So, Thank okay. you. Is there a motion to approve those changes? I make the motion to approve the uh, listers' changes as stated. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, listers. It is, it is a learning curve dealing with all this stuff, and we appreciate that and appreciate your work. Just Thank think you. We, when we think we got it, there's something else that comes no, no. up. <laughs> and I can say that uh, those the errors and omissions from last week were, or last meeting were not signed. Peter signed them, but so you need to sign the errors and omissions for uh, we all do. Bold, oh. and then you have to sign the errors and omissions for this. And you have this one. two there. Right here. One, two. Yeah. Just okay. Everybody needs to sign those things. And this is the new one, right? Yeah. Matter what I'll do. No, just any one. What's today's date? 913? Yeah, 19. No, 19th. 19th. No, I told her that I would have signed those. Got to. Thank you. Okay, so we have before us an applicant certification by the town of Middlesex for the uh, Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation regarding uh, the fire station, and this is the uh, stormwater runoff yep. permit. Yeah, so we're going to have a, a, a company review the, you know, it used to be uh, Chinette or whatever who used to do these uh, permits, go back and check, certify to the state that the water, that the water system is still what it's supposed to be, but we can't do it, we need to hire somebody, but we need to file this by, this notice of intent to do this project by September 23rd. Yes. When does the actual project need to be complete? The notice of intent is supposed to be It's not a big deal, you really, they really just have to go and say, yep, it looks good. So is there a motion to approve this? Certification, I guess, is what it is. The application for certification. Applic application right. for certification, excuse me. It has to be signed by the chair of the legislative body. Brandy moves. Okay. Second. Moves? Okay. Seconds. All in favor? Oh. Liz, are we, are we, uh, <laughs> do you need to go take a nap and come back? I just in might. Minutes? I just might. It was yes. all the fresh air. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And Peter, you're going to sign that, right? I'm signing it right now. Yes. Thank you. I have the minutes here signed. Okay. Welch Park update. <laughs> well, here's the sad story. I have called their office four times since the last meeting, spoken to Sue in their office, she speaks to John. They promised to call me back, and they have not called me. And I called again today, and I said, our board meeting's at 5 o'clock. 
I need to hear from you. I am really. I forget why we're even calling them. I, I do. It's because what we're time. trying to do is amend the operating agreement for Welch Park, which distributes responsibility for all the different stuff, the fire ponds, the septic, yeah. the this and that, to the different entities and dissolves the Welch Park Association. Yeah. And I don't know what the reason is that he can't get to it, but I mean, I'm ready. I mean, he's a friend of mine. I mean, that's the most embarrassing part. I'm, <laughs> I'm, ready, I'm ready to tell him if, if he can't move on this by the next board meeting, I'm gonna come and get the file and we're gonna have to give it to somebody else. I, I don't know what else to do. Now, who is it? What, John who? Riley? Oh, okay, I got you. Um, Carl Balin, your, your, your buddy Dorinda, suggested we have Dorinda go down and call on him personally in his office <laughs> and give it to him with both barrels. I said, I didn't think that was an appropriate approach. I thought, I thought Carl could give it to him with both barrels, but he won't even talk. He won't talk to Carl, and now he won't talk to me. Well, so, then, I mean, we're wasting, I mean, this is ridiculous because <laughs> we're incurring all these costs. It's going to cost us for this permit, and it's going to be. Well, We're that's permit goes with our fire station. I know it, but it, I'm just saying that, well, that's part of it, isn't it, or no? That doesn't fall into Welch Park? Well, everything we do, we're just fronting the money yeah. for yeah. something that we don't right. want to be a part and of. We've been fronting it now for... Well, what's your, what's your prep, prep pleasure, ladies and gentlemen? Because I am, I am literally at the end of my rope. Um, and I can't, I mean, if I can do Randy this myself, I'd do it, but... And I, the other problem is, there are two problems. Number one, I have no idea who the right person to hire to do this is. So we need to figure that out. And number two, it inevitably is going to cost a lot more money because somebody's going to have to figure this whole mess out. To start and from scratch. John, at least, knows the background. So do we give him a little more rope? Do we give him a one-month deadline? What, I don't know. Does having another person tag team calling him, every member of the select board calling him? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that, Randy. I I'm mean, happy I, to make some phone calls I and thought be having, on their call log as well if, it, if you think it's going to help. But. Stop over with donuts. <laughs> you know, okay, they are. I was going to drop over with a bottle of bourbon, but <laughs> I'm particularly frustrated because I he was in the office today. He wasn't out doing title searches. He was there. And I talked to his secretary, it was very nice, and she said, I assure you, he will call you back within the next hour. No call. That frustrating. Um, okay. I, I don't that. know. I don't, let's just say, let's just table, not table it, but let's, um, Pat, let's wait till another meeting to discuss. Really? I mean, we've been talking about Welch Park for years now. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we give them a month? For, the, for not the next select board meeting, but the following one. Well, if you can't talk to them, how do you get that I'm going to give to I'm going to give Sue the message, and I'm going to send them or a letter. Or a certified letter. Like, you have, to you have to sign for the letter. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Can I just give a little update about the town hall? Sure. Is that okay with everyone? Nod yeah. your head. Yes. I don't think we need a motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, update on the town hall. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next select board meeting is when VAA is visiting. Sarah, did we decide how long we were, we had on the agenda? Was it 30 no, minutes? You, you just told me, you just told me to put it on the agenda. I didn't know how Okay. Long. Um, because this is the public meeting, you know, where we're going to invite the public to come and hear, um, what we've done and sort of moving forward. So I think that when we were talking with VIA, I think we talked about We'd like a half hour if we can get it, because it just okay. takes that, that amount of time. Um, and then, uh, so next this next Monday, I'm meeting with Dave Megida, um, sort of to create the presentation. Sandy's away um, to create the presentation. They're also going to present, but sort of to give like a little historical perspective, um, and then have VIA share with what they worked on, um, and then. Uh, talk briefly in a slide or something about, you know, potential funding sources. Um, and, I mean, I know this isn't great timing <laughs> given the flood and our $3 million line of credit, but it is what it is. And so we're just sort of moving forward with sort of the plan of, of how we would potentially um, address the issues of the town hall. 
Um, so as a part of this whole um, process, I did, Dorinda, I reached out to um, the Vermont Bond mm -hmm. Center or whatever it's called yeah. to ask them if they would be willing to meet with us to sort of walk us through what the process is. I looked on their website, but I needed more information. They, they only issue bonds twice yeah. a year. Yeah, and so it sounded like um, we're in sort of the exact same spot that they are at with the whole MERP thing. Like, they're all like, yes, we're thinking of the same thing as, like, how do you leverage the bond with the MERP money? Um, so uh, there's a loan officer who's going to get in touch with me to schedule. So I would like you to be there. Dave probably would like to be there, too, Dave Megida. Mm -hmm. um, because sort of now is the time to um, be at least understanding what the process is and knowing that it is a winter and um, summer, I think it's yeah, summer and winter yeah. bonds that they do. Um, and um, so anyway, so, and then I've been researching um, on the leagues of cities and towns, the various funding sources that are available. The, the most obvious ones are the MERP. Um, there's probably smaller grants for historic pro trust uh, preservation Trust, there's um, ADA grants that can go pretty high for doing all of the elevator and ADA um, stuff that needs to get done. Um, there's like lower term loans and of course then there's the bond. And then, you know, another piece of this would also be, um, which I think Susan Clark would be willing to help with, is sort of a town philanthropic request, sort of one of those like raising, you know, the thermometer of how much we can raise and, you know, getting people to potentially give money um, on a personal level to, you know, be named the community room after them, that kind of thing. Um, the, but the reality is I did reach out to another person, um, I forget his name, um, but Susan Clark gave me his name, and he's somebody who sort of does he does this for a living as a consultant, although he's not interested in taking this on because he's too busy, but where you can hire someone to, um, to help you understand the stackable funding and what's available and you know when to apply and how to sort of apply everything together. Um, and we have, of that $4,000, we have 3,500 that we could potentially put towards hiring a consultant to help us. Um, he gave me a list of folks. I actually know a couple of people on the list and I thought I'd reach out to one to just give them a sense, like how much would this, like would you charge for this kind of thing? Um, and, um, and know that um, it, it's probably more than like what a volunteer <coughs> has the capacity to do well. Um, meaning like me, that's <laughs> Andy, right? Like it's, it's a, it's a big job, um, to kind of figure out, you know, how you're going to put this all together and then present it to the town. Um, the, um, so the other thing is that, so, and I've been playing telephone tag with Jenny from the municipal planning grant, um, about this town hall because, she keeps saying, you're spending this too fast. Like, usually nobody asks for the money yet. And I just, I need to talk to her about why and how we did some of the work before, you know, it was approved. But I believe we could also, even though we may have to front some of the money, we can, instead of not spending the grant, because some of it went towards a time when we couldn't spend it, is that she, I think she may allow us to put some of this money towards a contractor to continue this work that we're doing. So even though it wasn't in the scope of the original grant work, if we said, well, you know, if we had to return $4,000 because, you know, it, it was spent before we were supposed to spend it, could we use that money towards a um, consultant? So, and the match. I mean, really, I'd like to use it towards the match, but... Um, but anyway, I have to have that conversation with her. So there's just a lot of moving pieces. Um, and I just want to update everybody. That's where it is. So, Onward and upward. Yep. Yeah, Victor. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, you know, I, I, you did mention Sandy, uh, Sandy's mm -hmm. name, yeah, Levine, right? 
Yeah. Now she has that. Now, what's she doing with, uh, you, if you read the uh, Planning Commission uh, agenda tomorrow night, there, she, they're going to address that also? She got something in there on the town hall. Um, Are you familiar with that? I'd have to look at the agenda. I know that she asked us about applying, like, it, were we interested in applying for another, like there's some municipal planning grants come every year, right? And it's time to start thinking if you want to apply for another one. We just got two in a row. I feel like it's a little bit selfish to keep applying, but um, they, it wasn't about that, like applying for a municipal planning grant. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to read it again. I'd have to look at the agenda. I don't know if it was this agenda or the one previous, but there was something about discussing the use of ARPA funds. Yeah, that was on this one. That was on this one. I which believe really it. surprised me why they would be discussing the use of ARPA funds. But uh, I'm looking at the agenda for tomorrow night. What does it say? Our uh, it's municipal planning grant application due November 2023. Town hall, water system. Oh. Conservation planning roads defer defer in light of town's flood related projects. Yeah, I think they're just thinking: is this is there a reason that they should apply for a municipal right. planning grant for roads? What's the thing? Uh, for she said town hall for this or that, you know, like right. the water system. She's just, she's just throwing it out there on the agenda. Is there something that we want to? Is there something that pursue. the Planning Commission wants to pursue with the planning grant? Yeah. Part of me says, because I thought about this after, was maybe we want to apply for the planning grant to hire someone to plan for this. Because 4000 is not going to be enough. I think a consultant's going to ask for more right, than 4000 sure. What we need, if we're going to be doing this, we need a grant manager. Our office can't handle this, period. I mean, not especially yeah. now with all this FEMA stuff. I mean, I can't speak for Dorinda in the financial office, but I know... Um, overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. And yeah, I, you are. I, I, and Vic's overwhelmed, and Dorinda's overwhelmed, and Cheryl's overwhelmed, we're just overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. just the idea, we would have to, if there's a grant to hire somebody to come in, send out all the bids, do all this, that would be great. We already taking it a lot. Right. I know. I mean, that's this Liz sad reality. Amazing, amazing job. I really haven't, but... Would you so like Peter, to may I just do a quick list? update on? Are you done with? Can I do a quick update on Welch Park? I know Welch Park. Jesus. Please don't, don't, yeah. no, please don't say that back. name again. Really so. <laughs> Rich Road. I'm just going to do it really fast. Okay. We did the asbestos uh, consulting. The uh, attic is filled with vermiculite. Randy was very very helpful with this. Um, Clay Point said that they have also done send a bunch of tests out. If it turns out that the vermiculite was mined at a certain place in Colorado, is that right? Lummi, Montana. Lummi, <laughs> Montana. Uh, we can apply for a $4,000 rebate on that cost. But the bottom line is that the um, contractors for best asbestos remediation are in high demand. Can you imagine why? I can't. And so we're going to hustle to try to find a contractor uh, and we may not, I mean, I hope we make the deadline. Uh, our, our demo guy has said, okay, I'll put you on the list on October 30th. This project was supposed to be done September 30th, and then it was moved to help at October 31st, and then we've asked for another extension to November 31st, 30th. So that is where we are right now. It's just, we're at the mercy of the market right now. But... We all remember when those guys appeared here and said, don't worry about it if there are delays, right? Do we all remember that? Was in yeah. the meetings? Remember that? That's why we had them do that? Back me up on this, right? Right. Good, thanks. That's there it. are plenty of recordings saying so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have video. We have video. Okay, so that's the, that's the update of Rich Road. And as of right now, how many buyouts do we have from the current situation, 12 or 13? You said you approved 12. And a couple of people are now would like to come in and do some more, so we probably might have 14. i got to track some other person. FEMA around. won't approve 14 buyouts, I don't think. I There's so. one where she has not bought a data buyout, and it's, I'm wondering if maybe we just let the town just, I mean, she might just walk away from it. Like, it's a $36,000 property. Let it go to tax sale. The town has it just to store it.
What's a 36 thousand okay. acre property? What? We're going to have a nice park down there. How big is a 36 thousand dollar property? Play trailer. That's it. As well as that. Anything else, anyone? So our meeting tomorrow night's at 5 o'clock? 4.30. 4.30. Check email at 4 o'clock. Hope I remember. Mandy, text me. You can, um, uh, <laughs> Liz, set an alarm on your phone now. I have it on my calendar at work. It's just We could call you. I also have an 8.30 to meeting tomorrow morning that I'm answer the phone or not. convinced I'm going to forget to go to. Okay, well, before Liz falls asleep in her chair, I'm going to declare... <laughs> I'm going to declare tonight's meeting adjourned. Yay, thank you all very thank much. You. Thank you. I think you're right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a reminder. Yeah, I do that.